Hello everyone. This is the Ozark Outpost in Dixon, Missouri. This is the Commonwealth, January 1938. Great Britain started this turn with 19 pounds in their bank. They finished their escort carrier for uh, a cost of four. They bought a tactical bomber to go on it for 11. And they bought a colonial infantry, which will go to Eastern Egypt. That made their 19. And then, oh, didn't adjust that. There we go, now that's correct. They have one research chip. The British currently have stage two of advanced submarines, stage one of improved factories. So they're going to try and move that along. So, get down here. They're looking for a seven. Yeah, they got a six. They didn't make it. Okay. Uh, no combat for... Uh, well, let me cover the other guy's income. Uh, India has six. They're going to save that for the next turn. The same thing with Anzac. Canada has seven. They're also going to save that. Uh, no combat, naturally. They're not at war with anyone. The Brits are going to do one non-combat move. They're going to take this, this submarine right here off Gibraltar and they're going to move it two spaces over here to the Med Squadron. <clears throat> and they're going to leave everybody else in place. Now, one thing I need to cover here since I'm moving to Canada next. Um, on their last turn, I or one of their turns, first turn, I guess. I talked about the, the lack of a shipyard for Canada and uh, that I was putting it, the miner that I upgraded to a major here at Quebec. Well, that's not possible because a shipyard, as I said uh, at some point in these videos, has to be connected to a factory by a railway. So I changed that down here to the Canadian Maritimes. So that's all legally placed now. Uh, the Canadians are going to load the Queen's Own Rifles and the Patricias up on this transport here. And they're going to start heading for uh, Egypt. So transport moves two, plus one bonus from the major shipyard. So they get three moves. So that'll be one, two three down to here and move the two infantries out there with them as i said earlier uh the uh queen's own rifles and the patricias are the only land units that Canada, Canada can move out of home country uh, while they're at peace. Now over here in the South Pacific, Anzac is also going to send some help Egypt's way. Because things are going to get 
ugly there one of these days. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this motorized infantry, uh, hmm. Let's see, can you move a motorized infantry and another unit on a transport or is that just regular infantry? Let me check the rules real quick. Okay, I checked that out. You can move one infantry class unit plus one other unit uh, on a single transport. So they are going to do this by strategic naval movement. They can move three units, a transport and the two land units, a total of five spaces. So let's go around here. So they're going to go one, two, two to there, three, four, and five. They began at a port and they ended at a port. Uh, Either your port or friendly, it's Commonwealth, they share facilities. So those two uh, those two guys from the ship are going to disembark there at Aden and uh, check out the, the local culture while they wait for their next turn so that they can move farther. So there they are there. I know it's not a generally a good idea to move unescorted transports around the board, but they're not at war with anybody, and it was a pretty rapid move, so I think we're okay for the moment. Uh, that's going to do it for non-combat moves. Just look around here real quick. The situation down here for Anzac is all still the same. They've got their guys there in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and their uh, two militias up there in uh, New Guinea and uh, New Britain. Their navy's all still in the same places. They've got uh, Anzac has a destroyer and a light cruiser down here off Sydney. Of course, you saw where their transport went. Uh, India is all still the same. They've got their destroyer here off of uh, the Dutch East Indies. We've still got the lone infantry uh, flying the Union Jack there in Hong Kong. Got a coastal sub here. Got an escort carrier with a fighter here. Over here in India. We still have uh, the Indian Ocean Squadron here. What do we got there? Uh, battleship, heavy cruiser, a destroyer and a transport. Another transport right there. And then their land units are still the same. The militia, the fighter, the, the one regular infantry guarding the frontier. Somehow, that Siam militia guy got off there. And then, of course, we have the, the militia down here at uh, Malay guarding Singapore. So, over here in Southern Africa, we've just got the militia down here in South Africa, uh, militia here at uh, British Somaliland, and then uh, the guys here 
in Egypt, a militia and an infantry in Eastern Egypt, a militia Western Egypt, and an infantry in Transjordan. And then a little farther over, we've got a militia here garrisoning uh, Malta. Of course, you've seen the, the Med Squadron. And then over here at Gibraltar, I can get that twist where I want it to. Over here at Gibraltar, we've got the one militia. And then, of course, the uh, destroyer out here in the Atlantic. Uh, again, it may not look like the British are doing very much. It may look like they're just sitting back and letting events overtake them. But... Uh, They are building for the future. Let's see here. Uh, we've got the home fleet. Sorry. Got the home fleet there in the North Sea. Got some more guys there off Land's End. Uh, it uh, it will all come together eventually. Okay, go over here and collect income. Get my camera back up there. Uh, Great Britain collects 13. That's all they'll have in their bank because they spent everything this turn. India has six, to which they add another five for 11 next turn. Anzac has six, which they add another three for nine. Canada collects three, which they add to their seven for 10 next turn. So that's gonna do it. This is Ozark Outpost, over and out.